I said, listen, as a hip hop historian who loves hip hop, I would love for you to respond. Of course, mm-hmm. we want to hear. Drake dropped a diss track to Kendrick, and now we see what rap beef is really going to transpire from this because this now addresses Kendrick head on. He talks about how Kendrick is stuck in the top dog deal, not getting all his publishing, saying that Scissor's better than him, saying that 21 Savage is better than him, and just basically telling him he's not even worth being in the big three. Drake said that he'd rather repeat himself twice in the big three than acknowledge that Kendrick's actually one of the big three. And he also told The Weeknd, whose real name is Abel, that he's letting his man Cash spend up his money. And this is like tricking on your homeboy. So he's saying that basically he's tricking on men and not women by paying for his boys to do stuff. So it's like Drake, Drake coming at everybody on this. And then he also said that he was gonna cuff your girl like he's Ricky, which references Rick Ross being a CO in his past life before he became a rapper. And that Drake, the first number one, he put it in his hand. Without Drake, he wouldn't have had no number one. And he said the hit maker that everybody depends on. Right there, he just hit Kendrick Hart because he said, Kendrick can't be big stepping with a size seven men's on, which he's referencing the height and size of his feet because Kendrick's only 5'5", five five, and I'm sure his shoe size is not bigger than maybe a nine at best. But Kendrick's a big dog though, so that's it's still a hard one even though Kendrick's height and stature is similar to that Allen Iverson trophy that they just gave him, calling it a statue, which we all know statues should be bigger than that. but. I'm hearing that Philly actually does everybody's statues like that. So it's it's kind of wild. But um, yeah, I had to jump on here early today, you know, record this because I'm hearing these bars. And so, you know, we had to let it run in the background so everybody could see what these guys were talking about. And right there where he said, big difference between Mike then and Mike now, he was referencing the line where Kendrick called himself Prince and calling Drake Mike Jackson, saying that basically he was dead and that Prince was the better artist. I might have been Mike at that time, but now I'm a bald version of Mike, so I'm even better than I was when we first started all these things. And right there, he was saying that future, wiggy, 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 wiggy. That's part of his song. He said, you're spinning like you effing, but Drake's doing better than you, and he's buying Chanel. So that's referencing the stripper that they were kind of beefing over, because Drake did buy the strippers at Booby Trap Chanel bags, which made it, you know, a relevant discussion there for everybody to see. There you go right there. He's going to take the latest girl and cuff her like he's Ricky. And then he used that as like his um, his bridge. And right there, he even referenced J. Cole saying that that like that verse that Kendrick did was good. He said, I don't care what Cole's talking about. It wasn't good enough. He's saying Kendrick can't match his numbers, can't match his money, and that there's no way he's catching up. And then he emphasizes that even though he put this diss track out, this is not all he knows about Kendrick. So there's more to come if Kendrick responds, which I have a strong feeling Kendrick is going to respond. He's not gonna let Drake just take this and just you know sit back on his hands like, all right, you know what, he got me. No, he's he's got something cooking up for this as well. He even disses him about getting on the song with Maroon 5, talking about he had to write witty bars just to be able to you know have a verse for Maroon 5. And then also, dealing with the Swifties, which is Taylor Swift. And we know he did a song with Taylor Swift that was pretty good. So Drake's over here calling them out for having to click up with pop stars and you know different groups to be able to showcase what he was doing or whatnot. But how do you guys feel about Drake's response? Do you feel like Drake came out swinging? Do you feel like Drake could have done better? Do you like the beat choice? Do you like the style of his flow? All of that good stuff because he's on here cooking for me. I do wish he was a little bit more aggressive in his tone, but I also have a little bit of insight. There might be another diss track that's already wired up. Heard a little snippet of it last night, but obviously, you know, for reasons like this, I, I didn't get the full access to the song. Um, but yeah, no, nah, I think I think hip hop and rap are in a great place right now because we're getting beefs on wax, so it's gonna be a lot of entertainment with all these different people that are coming out and putting music together. And it might seem like everybody's jumping Drake, but you got to also understand that Drake has came at every one of these artists throughout his time, except for maybe Rick Ross. Everybody else has caught strays on his records throughout the time that he's been recording. And we're starting to notice it more and more now because you can dig in and go see what he actually was saying about different people and find out 
where the different references came from because everybody's doing their research now. Twitter is the best resource because everybody on there has an opinion. Everybody's translating the lines that he's saying, different records that he put together and figuring out who was who and what was the reference in whatever song. So some of the, the tweets that I saved right now, I'm going to read some of these to you guys so you can see what responses they had in regards to this whole situation. So Drake said, Maroon 5 need a verse. You better make it witty. Then we need a verse for the Swifties. Top say you drop, you better drop and give me 50. So he's basically saying he's at Top Dog, who is the CEO of Top Dog Entertainment, beck and call to record a verse for whoever he asked him to, like the Maroon 5 and Taylor Swift, which I don't know on that because I feel like Kendrick would want to do that because those are artists that were big and he was able to gas and show people his skills and talent that may necessarily not listen to his music because some Taylor Swift fans may not be Kendrick Lamar fans. But now, because he did that record, he has that fan base. Also doing the Maroon 5 record, he has that fan base. So, I mean, people have things to say at all times. You can't ever avoid the critics and the people that want to talk about different things that you could and couldn't do. But I mean, it's, it's a smart bar by Drake though. And then Drake even said, this ain't everything I know. Don't wake a demon up. Drop it, give me 50, all you F NIGs teaming up. I can say the word, but I don't want to say it in the video. <laughs> he threw a shot directed at Kai Sinat, but it really wasn't at Kai Sinat. It was still at Kendrick trying to say that he was begging Kai Sinat or someone's begging Kai Sinat to do something with them. I don't know which one, but I can't imagine Kendrick was the one that was begging Kai Sinat to do something because Kendrick doesn't care about being popular. So we'll see who who he's referencing and why. This was another one to where he directly fired back to that like that diss that Kendrick did because he said, it's me twice in the big three, I had to leave you out. So he's telling them right then and there, I don't respect your musicality, I don't expect you as, respect you as an artist, I'm gonna take the spot twice, so it's just me, Cole, that's it. Nobody else is basically what he was saying. But yeah, The weekend. <laughs> I have to laugh at this because The Weeknd definitely made sure that his presence was felt on the future project with Metro. On both albums, he has a song on the first one. Second album, he has a couple different songs that he's actually featured on, and he did a verse on those. So Drake had to come at him. He said, claim the six and boys ain't even come from it. He said, when you boys got rich, you had to run from it. Cash blowing Abel bread. Cash is his man, one of his boys, blowing his bread out here tricking. He said, it's shit we do for the women, he doing for the guys. <laughs> that, that's comedy that he really would sit here and tell this man that he does stuff for men, not for women. And then this was another direct line that he did for Kendra. He said, Pip Squeak, pipe down. You ain't no big three. SZA got you wiped down. Travis got you wiped down. Savage got you wiped down. Like your label, boy, you in a scope right now. How the F you big stepping with a size seven men's on? Kendrick, I hope you're ready to respond within the next 24 to 48 hours. We need it. I know it's coming. Come on, K-Dot. Let me hear what you got, because Drake definitely put at least, I want to say, 10 to 15 lines towards your direction. And he hit Ricky Ross. And he hit Future. And he told Metro right there. He said, hey, sit your hoe behind down and make drums. Like, you're not even in the mix with this. Like, just go ahead and sit out the whole game. Ah, gotta love it. Gotta love it. And then he even told him, this one was directed at Kendrick again. He said, what's a prince to a king? He's a son. He's a son, boy. Like, saying that he's the king and Kendrick is the prince. Kendrick referenced himself to prince in the diss. So he's saying that he's above Kendrick and is his father in this music thing. I don't know, I don't know. I'm hearing a lot of fire, guys. It's, it's, it's hitting kind of hard. Drake, Drake was really ready for this one. Oh, and then the, this part was for future. He said, I can never be nobody's number one fan. Your first number one had to put it in your hands. You boys can't get booked outside of America for none. I'm the hit maker y'all depending on. So basically saying that if he would have never linked with Future, Future would never be out of here. Future would never would have had these big hits. Cause Future was great at the trap music, always had the street stuff that everybody liked, but he didn't have a number one hit until him and Drake linked up. And now that they did, he's able to, you know, move around with number one records, do more in the industry and things like that. I mean, Drake's kind of telling the truth right there, so that's, I don't really hear anything that he's lying about. Oh, and then here was the, the full line that he directed at Rick Ross. He said, I might take your latest girl and cover like Ricky. Can't believe he's jumping in this 
turning 50. Every song that he made on the chart, he got from Drizzy. Worry about whatever going on with you and... Uh, basically just told Ross as well that he wouldn't have no hit records without Drake, which, I don't know, all the records that Drake did with, with Rick Ross, I do have to say that they were some great records, especially when he would do the Maybach music or anything else that he hit him with. Those melodic style beats, Drake definitely knew how to deliver on those, so it made it real crazy. I, I love it though, music is back. I feel like we're gonna have a strong spring and summer, a lot of activities, a lot of people going through you know, their, their catalogs, diving in their bag, trying to make stuff happen and come at the next person as far as who is gonna be the best artist that can be out there. So I think us as fans, we're in a great position prime spot to enjoy some real good music what do you guys think let me know in the comments below if you feel like drake is winning now did he crush kendrick how do you think this will end how many rounds do you guys think they'll go before they finally call it quits and who's gonna have the biggest record of the summer right now i have to say kendrick was up one then drake came back and tied it up drake's this might be slightly above kendrick's because it's more bars and more direct but now that Kendrick actually gets to respond directly to that verse, I, I think there's going to be some flames thrown. Thanks, Splashers, for watching. Catch you guys on the next one. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know your feedback on this beef, other beefs. Chris Brown and Quavo are going at it as well, which is crazy. And you got NBA Youngboy going at it with Finesse two times. And then, you know, you got the original beef of the future, the Drake, the J. Coles. Dr J. Cole decided to bow out because... I believe he spoke to both parties because they said that him and him and Kendrick actually spoke the day that that like that record dropped and you know they kind of had an understanding and then also I'm pretty sure he heard from Drake that this was coming so once he got that information he was basically like look I would have stayed in if it was going to be friendly competition and going back and forth cool 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 but knowing that these two really don't like each other and they haven't liked each other for the last decade he was like let me get out the way you two go ahead and do your thing, and then we'll just, you know, see where it goes from there. But hey, it's going to get good, and I'm, I'm happy to be able to see where they take this.